Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. On this episode, we are reviewing the first episode of Season 5 of Black Mirror, Striking Vipers. This was, you know, in my opinion, one of the best Black Mirror episodes so far. I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah I, loved I, lo it. I loved it. They killed it on a lot of, a lot of levels. I'm not sure the other episodes are going to hold up to this one. This season. This, for this season, yeah. right, for this season. Um, one thing that was interesting was that some of the, it makes you think, is this, this the same universe as, say, the Callister episode? Because some of the mm -hmm. technology was identical. Mm -hmm. so, that was, so that was interesting. So the premise was, what? You, you had a, a video game that had that interface, a computer mind interface that, that attaches to your temple, and then you are in that reality, an alternate reality. Completely. Completely and utterly, essentially indistinguishable. So let's back up a little bit, though. I just want, I do want to say, so if you haven't seen any of the episodes of Black Mirror before, we highly recommend it. It's an anthology, uh, meaning that each episode is just an episode unto itself. And although it's very, the seasons are very short, they're like between four and six episodes per season. So it hasn't been that many episodes. And we review, we have done we a, have done a review, yeah, review on a, for. I believe is a, of a season, not just a we, season. Yeah, we right, focused so on the Callister. Oh, we did we, focus on the Callister. But they are solid. Season. I mean, they're hour long episodes. They're not five to 15 minutes yeah, short like other anthologies. One hour episodes. Every one has been at least good, and the many have been great. And the premise is Black Mirror, actually, we, we, we figured out and we read that it refers to a, a TV, what a TV looks like when it's off. Right. It's like a Black Mirror. And it, it is uh, an exploration of near future technology, social media, and other types of technology, digital technology, and how that is going to affect humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think this episode, I mean, you know, you, 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 I was beginning to wonder, like, how many more different topics do they have to deal with? But they did it. I mean, this, is, this episode, I thought, you know, it makes you think on so many different levels, and I'm sure we'll be thinking about it a lot for days, you know, after watching it. And spoilers, we can't discuss it without having a spoiler. Yeah, from this point forward, it's going to be spoilers galore. Well, all right, so my, my sex take on the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, look, it was, it, was, it was an obvious plot that no one had thought of, or I haven't really seen anyone handle on this level before. What's it going to be like mm -hmm. when we have true virtual reality, totally immersive... Uh, sex, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they bring, you know, the characters like really explore it. Like we see relationships, we see, you know, a married couple, they love each other, they have a chemistry with each other. Um, you know, then you have a, a best friend of the husband and the two of them end up going into a fighting game. Like It's like Tekken, but you're the character. Mm -hmm. And they end up having sex in the game because the game allowed it. But, well, not only allowed it, Jay, this is you know, I would I would argue that that's for, a feature, not a bug. For, <laughs> <laughs> sure, right. Yeah. For for a pure game, you would not want to ha have to add the oodles of code and things that you would need to replicate sex so fully. So this is I think maybe it was a, a veil, like a, a subtly veiled like, yeah, this is a game. Yeah, you can fight in this thing, but it's really it's really not meant for that. I mean, yeah, other, otherwise, been... why why would they have such a huge layer in a game? It's like it's not really. Mm -hmm. They should have called the game Striking Vipers Triple X because that's, <laughs> that's really what it was. So, but, but a few things. One, like, big takeaway that it, it is outside of what I thought was an excellent script, an excellent directing, excellent acting. Especially the wife. She was fantastic. She was awesome. She was awesome. really, really good. Was a, such a But one of the tool. things that really struck me was how amazingly well they simulated two actors pretending to be in that kind of video game. Mm -hmm. That was unbelievably hard to do. You know, from a technical standpoint, everything else was hard. It was the production level was fantastic, and I was impressed by every every inch mm -hmm. of this. But that part, you know, especially as a fan, and I'm totally aware of those games. I know, you know, we've played games like this many times. Yeah. You know, seeing the actors bring to life what it's like to be one of those karate characters in a, a fighting game was was unbelievably good. It, it was, was, well it was so it was so on the nose. It was un, it was weird that how well they nailed it. Like it was it wasn't just you're playing it. It was that the characters were experiencing it for the first time. Right. And you see them like testing out their powers and the guy even said I don't remember how to do all the moves that this guy can do. And I thought that was really And that was smart. such a small part of the episode right, too. Right, they yeah. did, but they nailed it and did right. it very well. It's a little touches that you when you kill yeah. a little touch it really can add. But to the it. thing that made the episode great was the exploration of okay, what's it going to be like when you can have virtual sex yes. fully, like you're fully immersive. And they did explore a lot of angles of that. So if one 
angle is, is it cheating? And that was sort of directly dire uh, addressed in the plot. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think the-, the One of the actors said it's like, it's like porn. It's like porn, it's not cheating, it's like porn. It's like, no, but, but no. it was pretty clear no. it was cheating. Even though nothing physically was happening, it just sort of gorked out on the couch. Well, it's but infinite, in every it, sense it is. It it is. Emotionally yeah. it is. You know, psychologically it but is. It, it, there's infinite shades of gray there because first of all, it depends on how you define cheating because yeah. everyone can have a different definition. The kind of relationship that I personally have, mm. that's I would never be okay with my wife doing it. She would never be okay with me doing it. So therefore it's cheating. Mm -hmm. But there are couples that exist out there that porn is cheating between them, mm -hmm. right? So it really just Right, depends. it's all about relationships. Are, like you said, relationships are infinitely variable. Not just, and even within monogamy itself, but then you go to other types of relationships like like polyamorous relationships, open relationships. The spectrum is, yeah, is I think huge. In, no, in that relationship, yes, it they was were cheating monogamous. Yes. because and it was just very clear, he pulled away from her. He was not interested in her, not having sex with her. So it was interfering with their relationship in the way an actual affair would. It mm -hmm. was an affair. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, in that relationship, it, it exactly was. Mm -hmm. and, and they even infused the idea that one, one of the friends was a man, and he was playing a woman uh, you know, mm -hmm. in the game, and he was experiencing what it was like to be in a woman's body in the game, which was incredibly mm -hmm. provocative. And then, so they were having a male-female sexual relationship in the game between two males. Yeah. The players were two males. Right. Yeah. And that, to me, it was so much to absorb in, in a, an amazingly short amount of time. I'm like, wait yeah. a second. They're friends. They're in a game. They're, one's playing a male. One's playing a female. They're both guys outside of the game, but they're having a, a male-female relationship in the game. Oh, my God. So what is that? How do you parse through what that? What is that? Yeah. I mean, it's not really a homosexual relationship, right? right? And, and, well, they right? established that. because It's a they, virtual heterosexual relationship. Yes, right. And, but the whole episode, I'm like, wait. Are they trying to make a, a statement about homosexuality in some way well, or not? And then, of course, they cleared that pretty much the whole thing up yeah. at, the, at the end because yeah. they really didn't have th th those kinds of feelings for each other outside of the game. So mm -hmm. it kind of added, it gave a new cast to, to the relationship, it was their the friend, sexual relationship. Right. It was their friendship uh, chemistry that fueled the male-female relationship that they had right. inside of the game. Right. Yeah, but there's, again, there's so many layers there because yeah, are you really, really attracted to the character and not the person playing the character? I think there's an element there. True. And it also it does you know, challenge the notion of how rigid gender is because exactly. you know, yeah, if you go in a virtual world playing a different gender, how much of that physicality would you know, determine your gender? Mm -hmm. Would you really sort of become a woman if you were playing a virtual female in a game that was that immersive. I guess long enough, if you did it long enough, you and would. Well, it, well it's, it's interesting to think yeah. about that, you know. Um, well, one thing, I, I just couldn't understand why the, um, the guy, the, the guy who, who, who played Chen, was it Jimmy Chen, what was his yeah. name? Um, he, why didn't he want to experience sex as a woman? I mean, to me, that'd be like, of course you oh, would yeah. want to try the, well, to, to experience that. When, when do you get a chance? They probably, <laughs> Bob, honestly, they probably didn't have enough time to get, go there, right? Right. Because the, the, the other guy said that he had sex with a polar bear, and he tried all the other characters. One of the best lines in the movie, I had sex with a polar bear. Yeah, he said it <laughs> twice, line. actually. Yes, twice. Like, like you got a you know, reality check. So they did go there briefly, and of course, like, because you see the characters they're scrolling through. Like, one of them was like this big sumo wrestler type of guy. Yeah. Like, imagine becoming, you know, like going inside that body. What did they make you feel like when you were 400 pounds, very muscular but very fat? That's got to be weird and uncomfortable. Like, they couldn't go through all those details. But, I, I know, but, but they touched down on all of it. And I, you know, and you're thinking of it when you're watching the episode. You're like. You know, we all did. We all like, what would it be like, you know, scrolling through those characters and, and experiencing mm -hmm. all those different bodies that they can put you into? And so, you know, on top of that, this, the, the episode made me unbelievably uncomfortable in a good way, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it was really challenging me. I'm like, I'm uncomfortable. You know, I'm personally. You should be uncomfortable at some point watching any Black Mirror episode. Right. I mean, that's pretty much a universal yeah, of the series. But, it, you know, again, that's a testament to fantastic. Screen, yeah. Screenwriting, fantastic directing, fantastic acting, fantastic editing. In order for me to be to be so deeply like, oh my god, this is cringeworthy. Like I didn't want, I didn't like a lot of things that were happening. It was awkward. So I'm also having a conversation with myself as I'm watching it. Like, wow, I really feel uncomfortable. Why am I so uncomfortable? And then I'm identifying the things in my head that really, yeah, good. You know, that make me uncomfortable. Like I'm heterosexual, and it is difficult mm -hmm. for me to watch two men kiss, even though I'm, you know, whatever. I'm totally whatever about it. But for me, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's it, and, and that's part of the show. That's part of the uncomfortableness. And then I was thinking, like, what's it like for a gay guy to watch this show? 
what experience would be different for them? Because mm -hmm. it's two men. Like, you know, they, they might have a totally different experience watching it, which fascinates me because I, I have no perspective. I don't know what it would be like. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and all the genders in between. What are the, yeah. what are the other people, what, what would they feel for that? And well, I think, again, the, part of the, the, uh, the story of Black Mirror as a whole is that Technology is going to challenge our sense of humanity and in, self, in, and self, yeah. in, in a yeah. lot of very important ways. And this does that. You know, you could be a different character. You could be a different person. You could be a different gender. You could be a totally different, you know, whatever. And, and what will that be like to have a right. virtual self? And they also sort of made, I thought, the point, which is interesting to think about. But because it's virtual mm -hmm. and it could be whatever you want it to be, in a way, they made it seem like it was actually better than real. It sure. was more intense. Yeah. Well, it was more immersive, more everything. It was like right. nothing in the real meat world comes close to that. Well, then right. why and not to, go in with your wife then? Like go in with your partner. Right. You know, that, well, sure. Well, Jay, that, that's, that's what the episode did. Because you, you had this, you show this little slice of a video game that you could have sex in that's perfectly 3D, tactile, everything. Night, yeah. Now, and, and that's great. But if you step back a bit, you're like, wait a second. This technology would transform the entire Society. Yes. Yeah. Every every right. civilization on earth. He they showed scenes of him in work. You you really wouldn't need to go to work anymore, would you? You could just sit in your at home and be and work anywhere, and people yeah. could all mm -hmm. be conferencing together. You could have people that are uh, that are quadriplegic, and they could have a, a, a full you know walking and doing everything. Right. In, in the, 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 just the impacts on society. They well, don't we really yeah, touch yeah, on. We it. discussed that. I mean, this is that's just a, that's the tip of the iceberg, right? This right. Is the, so yeah, the, right. this could lead to, you know, as we've discussed on the SGU, and, and I don't know if we've discussed in the Q6 before, that where, where people are spending most of their time, they're living their it'll, lives virtually, because why wouldn't you? Because in the it'll virtual happen. world, you have a perfect body, you have whatever body you want, yeah. there's, no, you could, the, there's magic in the world, right? It's a magical world, anything can happen, there's no the resource limitations. So, you know, why wouldn't we just get lit, you know, civilization basically exist so that we could, you know, be in right. this virtual mm -hmm. world? And that's why I think we haven't, you know, uh, we haven't found any UFOs or aliens because I think at some, at some point, point they go inside. They, they go inward instead of outward. Yeah, right. try, that's yeah. just my, that's just. Uh, One of the hardest scenes for me was when he was lying to his wife in the restaurant yeah, on yeah. their anniversary dinner. You know, at the time she's pregnant with their second child. No. Third. Right? Not yet. Oh, wait, 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 yet. Not, you're right. You're not right. It wasn't yet. yet. You're right. Because they didn't get their relationship back on track yet. But he, when he was lying to her, I was, I was offended by it. Yeah. And I was also scared by it because I'm like, well, I mean, how, how, how much of that could be me? You know, could I get trapped in right. a video game reality? And, and would I be that guy sitting there like blatantly lying? Because he, well, he can convince himself that nothing is happening. I'm sitting on the couch. You know, he could yeah. convince himself. I didn't do of anything. That. I didn't, didn't do cheat anything. on you. But it, you know, and in a way, it's safe because there's no disease, there's no pregnancy, whatever. You know, yeah, that there, too. So you could convince yourself. There's not even yourself. any mess when you wake up. But it yeah. is, you said it before, Steve. It's it's emotionally cheating at at best. It's emotionally cheating, yeah. which you know, in a, to a lot of people, that's the worst thing you could do. Mm -hmm. I think I could accept. Uh, on a different level, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to accept any level of cheating in my life, but it, there's a difference between what he did in the video game and going out in the real world and having sex. I think, the, you know, the more it, mm -hmm. intimate it is, the worse it is. Emotionally, it's worse the more intimate right. it is. That's my, that's yeah. my actual yeah, point. Yeah. So, I, I gotta tell you, this episode was amazing. It was amazing. It, it, it was challenging to watch. It makes you question Lots of things about you know where you draw lines all over the place mm, in your right. life, and it's a good thing. It's a healthy exercise, and the acting was superb, right? You said the it, the woman who played the wife, oh, she, her yeah. act, she was like she was fantastic. She was fantastic. She really was, and I loved the ending. The ending, I was clapping. I think I was actually clapping because because that could have gone so many different ways. I was thinking they were fighting. They, they, one of them could have killed the other one, right? Mm -hmm. To to kind of hide this thing, he could have he could have lied to his wife and not told them. Not told his wife why they why they were fighting, but yep. it, and they I love how they handle it. He's about to say something in the car, and they cut the scene. It's like what how many how many like weeks later or something, and you're like, what did he say? Seven he, months later, did he say funny, anything? Yeah. So it's seven months later. Of and course, you know, you knew that he told her. By the way, you know the lead up to it, but but you don't know yes, what the outcome. You don't know was. What the outcome was, yeah. And then and then what the, their their resolution was. I thought it was beautiful yeah, because it, was it showed that they they you know they had a. Basically, he did cheat, but they grew from that experience, and they actually changed the nature of their relationship. No longer monogamous, mm -hmm. but now kind of like a, like an open. They controlled poly. it. They, they, 
It's like, you know, you, right. so one day a month, you get to, you know, get exactly. your freak on, and I get to go out and do my thing. Yeah. And th th to me, that was a completely unexpected resolution. It was. It was, it was a good was, ending. I loved it. It was, it was a was, mature but, ending. But yeah. even the ending rubbed me the wrong way, because that's not how I would have resolved it in my life, right? But, so, but that's, that's, but that that's means fine. That the episode was even better, because every, every part mm -hmm. of it was challenging. You know, and I had to question, like, well, it's okay for them to do it. You're right. I had to say to myself, was, I, I yeah. couldn't have resolved it, but they did. So good for them. Yeah, but that's and a lot of people I, right. would, would have resolved I, it. I don't. Way. I don't think the resolution itself matters. The fact that they did resolve it is what matters. Right. They were able to accommodate this in their lives and adapt their lives to this technology. Yes, that, Whatever their particular solution was fine for them doesn't mm -hmm. mean that wasn't. I think the important part. The important part was I think they they, they adapted. Yeah, and this episode didn't have like Which, a dark. Or, you know, right. a lot of times, you know, like Twilight Zone episodes and it's a dystopian. Yeah, there, there's something bad, but this was encouraging. It was like they survived it, and you know, people yes. were still connected. Mm -hmm. Civilization and relationships can survive the, this type of disruptive technology, mm -hmm. which is very encouraging and and hopeful. Right. right. And, and Black Mirror, yeah, isn't always so hopeful. No, not the, always. Uh, you're right, though, Bob. If we ever had that technology, I mean, you put that on and you can you can fashion a 100% lifelike reality, and you go there like that could could destroy society. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of lot of possibilities there. It's like, oh man, I haven't eaten in three days, you know, <laughs> yeah. or uh, I haven't even showered this month. They have to build in limits to it, for right? The most right, and we just but we got it. We can't stop it because that's the kind of technology is coming. We just well, gotta, I don't think it's coming gotta, anytime soon. No, no not that, that level of super. A little dot that you put in. Yeah, no, that's it's going to take a while, but. What we're talking about, it's important. Even if it was a full it. helmet, just the idea that it's your, it's your, you're completely immersed in a neurological reality. Yeah, I don't think sure. we're, we're anywhere near that. a matrix, yeah. like a matrix type of thing. Yeah. No, but I, something that you know maybe our grandkids or great grandkids might have yeah. to deal with. And, and, and where, but where will the that. tipping point be? Because you know, we, well, Steve and I both have virtual reality headsets, right? And they're great. They're, it's a ton of fun. It's not that great. <laughs> they're not like that. Yeah. No, no, they're not like that. But I mean, they are great. So you're, not, you're not having sex in VR yet, Steve? They're, they're immersive, no. but there's so much that isn't there yet. The tact, tactile, you know, like you can't articulate fingers. Like they're just now coming out with some of these things. A mm -hmm. lot of games, like you don't even see like below the waist. You know, you're not like yeah. moving your feet. Like you're just getting these, connecting these yeah. things. You know, maybe in the next five to ten years, it'll reach that next level of immersion. They have to broaden the mm -hmm. uh, field of view and yeah, things yeah, yeah. like that. But it's a, but it's still a huge leap from just a screen. Mm -hmm. right? It's Absolutely. a different experience. Yeah. It's a different experience. Yeah. I'm because I've, I've using my virtual reality setup. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a virtual desktop in there. Like I want to work. I, I would love to have it where I can have like four or five screens. Right? So I tried the virtual desktop, yeah. and it's 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 fun for a short period of time, but it's exhausting to work that way. It is the head the headgear is too heavy. Yeah, it's we're not there yet. We okay. are totally not there yet. And, and and for what? So that you can have a lower res monitor floating in space in front of you, it, it's not worth it at this point in time, in my opinion. Yeah. And there have been people who have tried to make the virtual desktop office kind of thing and they, they concluded but the technology is not ready yet. When you can get lighter headgear that's more wrap around um, to take better advantage, higher resolution, and, you know, be, then yeah. You're going to have to restate that last sentence. When, when you get, why is your phone even? It's on, it's on airplane mode. That's weird. Change the uh, camera angle. Remember we read the sentence. Um, you were saying when like you, the things, yeah. yeah, so when, when the, you know, the, the goggles are lighter. Break. Give me a clean break. When when the goggles are lighter and they're more wrap around and you know the resolution is higher, then maybe it will make sense to have a virtual office. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're, we're not there yet. And but, the other but big play thing, with it. Yeah, of course, there, there are enormous amounts of fun. But the the real thing right now, and you and I have said this many times, they haven't built the game yet. Yeah, like they, they haven't built a killer virtual reality game. There are fun games. I've played some really fun virtual reality games, but nothing that is like. This is it. This is the full realization of the potential of VR. They yeah. haven't built that. Game but yet. I do think that the current technology is there, the headset technology yeah. and everything. They just need a game to, to kind of really pull it all together. Mm -hmm. They're working on it. Yeah, Somebody's yeah, yeah. working on it right now. <laughs> so, overall, uh, you know, I know this yeah. is one episode. They hit it out of the park. They hit it completely yeah. out of the park. They were, I don't have a, a negative thing to say about no. it. I loved it. It was a fantastic, dystopian, weird. Uncomfortable, awesome, intriguing, mm -hmm. encouraging, encouraging episode. Yeah. yeah, and it was. It did. It did have all of that built into it. So if you enjoy the show, you can go to alphaquadrant6.com 
We have YouTube videos, we have a Facebook page and a Patreon. So if you, uh, if you enjoy the show, please consider becoming a patron of ours and we will see you next week.